Good afternoon, everyone. Um, is my screen properly visible and am I audible? Can someone give me a heads up in the chat? All right. First and foremost, welcome to day 12 of Pragati Test Booster Sessions by Admis. I'm your tutor, and just as the previous session, we are going to discuss on quantitative aptitude, right? And today is going to be the last discussion on this particular topic, right? So with that said, let's promptly move forward to the topics of today's discussion. Today, we are going to study about two topics only, right? First is equations both linear and quadratic. These are quite basic, but there are some formulae which you guys will have to keep in mind to sort of solve them properly. Next up, we'll be dealing with progressions, right? Progressions are pretty basic as well. We'll be learning about two types, arithmetic and geometric. There's another one called harmonic as well, but we won't be going into that for the purposes of this particular discussion. With that said, let's promptly move to the first topic of discussion, which is equations, all right? So first and foremost, take a look at this particular slide, right? Equations of the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, c are real numbers, and a and b are not zero, and x and y are variables, is called a linear equation in two variables, right? So keep in mind two variables, right? Had it been a single variable, then either of a or b could have been zero, but both should not simultaneously be zero. This condition is to be kept in mind while solving equations in two variables, right? Which you will be dealing with mostly in the upcoming sessions. Another important thing to note is this particular table, right? This table gives you a brief overview of some conditions which sort of indicate what kind of solutions are present in those equations, right? So for instance, if the, um, we'll get onto these while we practice later on, right? But for the timing, what you guys can do is take a screenshot of this particular slide, because this table is important when you're dealing with certain kind of problems. You'll have to know some conditions. With that done, uh, quadratic equations are equations that are basically in this particular format ax squared plus bx plus c. Notice the squared, this indicates that the equation is quadratic or of two powers, right? So with that, um, this is the form that we'll be dealing with. Now, quadratic equation, a single quadratic equation usually has two solutions, right? Those two solutions may be the same or they may be different, or they may be imaginary, or they may be real or irrational as well. So there's no particular restriction to the solutions that we may get from a particular quadratic equation, right? For instance, and the solution for quadratic equation is given by this formula, right? Minus B plus or minus root under B squared minus four AC over two L, two E, sorry, right? So when you take the plus sign, you'll get one particular solution of the quadratic equation. And when you take the negative sign, you'll get the other solution of this quadratic equation. So there'll be two values of X, which both satisfy this particular equation, right? Now, you see this orange part or this part highlighted in orange, right? This thing is called the discriminant, right? discriminant discriminant of a quadratic equation discriminants are usually used to determine whether the solution that we get from this 
particular equation is real or imaginary or irrational, rational or irrational, right? So all of these things will be determined by only using the discriminant, right? So keep this in mind as well. Discriminants are super important in most problems, right? Um, and they are represented by the capital Greek letter delta or a triangle, right? So this is the standard notation, mathematical notation for discriminant, right? So keep that in mind as well. So with that done, there's another key thing to note in equations, and that is um, sum of roots and product of roots. So roots are basically the values of x that satisfy this equation or the solutions of this equation per se, right? And we already know that there are two solutions to a quadratic equation, right? And so the sum of the roots or the sum of the solutions is given by this formula, right? B is this, this B, right? And E is the coefficient of X squared. Similarly, the product of roots is given by C over E, which is C is equal to this and E is equal to this. I hope most of you are already familiar with this, but if you aren't, take a look at these and these are quite simple. You just have to memorize these particular formulae. Minus B over E is the sum of the solutions or roots and C over E is the product of the solutions or roots, right? So with this said, um, I think we are good to move on to the practice problems involving quadratic and linear equations. Take a look at this problem and try solving this. I'll be giving you guys a few minutes. All right, so let's solve this particular question, right? It's quite simple. You guys can solve this by using both elimination or substitution method, right? So we'll be starting with um, sort of, we can solve this in some particular ways, right? First, we can solve this directly, right? That is to mean we solve them by mathematical methods by making x equal to four minus two i over three from this equation, and then substituting this value of x in this equation, and then finding the value of y, right? But another simple method in this particular case, right? Another simple method would be to simply input values of x, y, sorry, from these options to these equations, right? And then check the values of, and then solve for X, right? So for instance, take a look at five, right? So if I keep five in this equation, what I get is three into X into X plus 10 equals to four, or X is equal to minus two, right? So value of X comes out as minus two, and we know that Y is equal to five since that's what we are doing from here, right? And so we substitute these two values in the first equation, right? And see if they satisfy this or not. If they satisfy this, then these two are the solutions. If they don't, then these are not the solutions, right? 
So when you keep x equals minus two, this happens as minus 16 plus 25, 25 equals to nine, right? And so we get nine is equal to nine. So the correct answer in this case is in fact, x equals minus two and y equals to nine, right? Definitely the correct answer is nine in this particular key, sorry, five in this particular case. This is five. Is this clear to everyone? Okay, so with this done, let's move on to question number two. All right, so in this particular problem, the correct answer is option number C, which is minus two, right? What can be done here is, first let's write these equations, five over X plus six Y equals 13 and three over X plus four Y equals seven, right? So from this equation, what we can do is we can find one over X is equal to, one over X is equal to 13 minus six Y over five, right? This is the value of one over X. And we have got one over X here as well. So we can write this as three times. We substitute the value that we obtained here, here. And this can be written as 13 times, three times 13 minus six Y over five plus four Y equals to seven. Now you can directly solve this equation since we've only got to one variable here. You multiply these, take the LCM and then solve for Y and Y comes out as minus two. This is pretty basic, right? So for those of you who tried to sort of take the value of X and solve this, that works as well since X is in the denominator, nothing really bad happens, right? But you can directly take one over X and since X this basically is one over X, you can solve it that way as well. Is this clear to everyone? Okay. So with this done, let's move on to the third problem. We are provided a chain of equations, right? We have been given three equations which are related likewise, right? We have to find the value of X and Y in this particular case.
So this question is fairly basic as well. First, what I'll be doing is I'll be taking these two equations only. So from there, what I can get, what I get is x plus y minus eight over two is equal to x plus two y minus 14 over three. Yeah, definitely. For those of you who are saying that the answer is C, it's definitely C. And from this, you cross multiply, right? You cross multiply, multiply this, and then this. And so what you get is 3x plus 3y minus 24 equals to 2x plus 4y minus 28, right? So you solve this and you get x minus y equals to minus four, right? So you've got a particular condition, right? So from this, you guys can check, right? From this particular condition only, you guys can check which of these satisfy this. So one, if you put x equals one and y equals seven, that does not satisfy because that is minus six. Two and seven gives minus five in this, so this is not true. 2 and 6 gives minus 4. This can be the answer, right? But 1 and 5 also gives this answer. So 1 and 5 can be the solution as well. So we have boiled it down to two options only. And so when you have already boiled it down to two options, you can directly substitute these values in these last two equations and then check, right? So substitute these values in these last two equations and then check which values satisfy those two equations, and then that sort of solves it easily. And the only one that satisfies is the option number C. So option number C is the answer. Is this clear to everyone? Okay, so with this, let's move to question number four. All right, so I'll be sharing a really shortcut way of solving this, right? So take a look at this. The coefficients of x and y are interchanged in this, in these two equations, right? Here, the coefficient of x was 217 and coefficient of y was 131. But in this second equation, they are exactly reversed, right? So when this happens, what you guys can do is simply add these two up, right? Add these two equations, add. You simply add these two equations up and what you get is 348 X plus 348 Y equals to 1740, right? So you get this. And so what you do again is 348 bracket x plus y equals to 1740, right? And next up, what you do is x plus y equals to five, right? This becomes our first condition. Now with this condition established, we can input the values of x and y from these options and check, right? Which of these add up to five? One and six, it add up to, adds up to seven. So this is not the answer. Three and two adds up to five. So this might be the answer. 12 and 13 adds up to 25. Oh yeah, 25. Uh, so this is not the answer. 16 and 18 adds up to 34. So this is not the answer as well, All right? So the only possible answer is option number B. So that's the correct answer. Is this clear to everyone?
All right, so with this done, let's move to the fifth question. For what value of H, the system of inequality is this, and this have an infinite number of solutions. So to solve this problem, you will have to know the conditions that should be met for two equations to have infinite number of solutions. Right? So the condition for these is that E over A1 e must be equal to B over B1 must be equal to C over C1, right? So this is the particular condition, right? And so with this, we simply solve them, right? For those of you who are saying that the answer is option number B, which is four, that is in fact the correct answer, right? But how is that the case? Take a look at this. We write these two equations, x plus 2y plus seven equals to zero. This is the first equation. Next up, we've got two x plus hy plus 14 equals to zero, right? So the coefficients of these, the first equation is a, b, and c. The coefficients of second equation is a1, b1 and c1 right so what you do ultimately is check for this condition right so it must be that one over two is equal to two over h is equal to seven over 14 for these to have infinite number of solutions and from this we take the first two or the last two that does not really matter right so from this, what we get is that H is equal to four. Is this clear to everyone? Okay. So keep these conditions in mind as well, right? Let's move All right, so the answers seem quite mixed in this one. The correct answer is option number E, minus five comma three, right? So how did we come about this? So there are a few different ways of solving this. First, you can manually check for each values of X, input them in this particular equation and check if they satisfy. But for that to happen, you would have to check, check this eight times, right? Um, and so that's pretty lengthy. Another method is by using the formula x is equal to minus b plus or minus root under b squared minus 4ac, right? It can be solved by this method as well, by over 2a, right? So this is fairly simple if you are used to this formula, right? You Or another method is simply manipulating this x equation and making it into factorized form, right? That is to mean since it's in its quadratic form, if you sort of make this in the form of two, we've got X here, X here, and this is equal to zero, right? And we've got some numbers here. If you sort of bring them into this format, then this factorized form, then you it can be really easy to 
see the solutions, right? So these two methods are ideal for computing this. We'll be checking out the first method, which is fairly straightforward. What you guys do is x equals minus b, b is two. So minus b is minus two plus or minus root under uh, b squared, two squared is four and minus four ec. So that's minus four into e is equal to one and b c is equal to minus 15, right? And then this happens. And so two e, right? And so this comes out as minus two plus or minus, this happens to come as uh, four times 15 is 60, 64. So this is root 64, which is eight, right? Over two. And so this comes out minus two plus or minus eight, eight over two, right? So this is the particular equation, right? That, and so from this, you can take the plus sign at one instance and then minus sign at other instance. And from that, you'll get that minus five and three is the correct answer in this case. Is this clear to everyone? I mean, once you know the formula, solving quadratic equations is really simple. You can always apply this formula. This is the universal sure shot way of solving quadratic equations, right? So with this done, let's move to the seventh question as well. The roots of this equation are what? So to solve this particular equation, right? you have to be mindful about one particular thing and that is the discriminant, right? Discriminant. Once you know what the discriminant of this is, you can analyze whether the roots are any of these four options, right? So the formula for discriminant, which is represented by Delta, right? Is equal to B squared minus four, BC, right? So the discriminant for this is B squared is 12, minus 12, minus 12 squared is 144, and minus 4AC is 4 times 10, which is 40 times 3, which is 120, right? So discriminant comes as 24. Now, with this discriminant in place, right? With this discriminant in place, what we know is that 24 is not a perfect square, not a square, right? A perfect square number, right? And it is non zero as well. So since this is not a perfect square, notice that in X, equals to minus b plus or minus root under b squared minus 4ac. This discriminant is placed under square root, right? And since 24 is not a square root, b is irrational, right? So with this, what we can directly imply is that one, we know that it's not equal, right? it's not equal and two, we can imply that the solution is definitely going to be irrational since irrational plus rational is always equal to irrational as well. The correct answer is option number D, which is irrational and unequal, right? Contrary to what most of you guessed, that is because square root of 24, root under 24 is 4.89 something, something, something. And this keeps on repeating. So this is irrational, right? Irrational. And adding something or minus B to this does not really make a difference to its irrationality. And since we've already got 
plus or minus here, we definitely know that adding and subtracting, even if it's the same quantity, it's going to be a different value for X by taking plus at one instance and negative at another instance. So at the end, what we know is that this is irrational and unequal. Is this clear to everyone? For those of you who are guessing rational and unequal, you guys were right about the second part that they are unequal, right? But they are not, the solution is not rational because it's a square root of 24 comes in the solution. Is this clear to everyone? All right, so with this done, let's move to the eighth question. The sum and the product of roots of quadratic equation, this, this, this are. So th this can be directly solved. It's quite basic, right? We know the formula about, you don't even need to solve for roots, but just by looking at this equation, it can be solved. Yep, definitely. The correct answer is exactly as Soiluja says. The correct answer is option number D, which is none of these. Why is that the case? That is because the sum, we know that the formula for sum is minus B over A, right? And B is 20, so minus B over one is going to be minus 20. This is the sum. And the product is C over A, right? Which is equal to three, right? So the sum is minus 20, product is three, but minus 23 is not present anywhere in these three solutions. So the correct answer is option number D, right? Is this clear to everyone? It's fairly simple. This is quite direct. Okay. Okay, so next up we'll be going to question number nine, All right? Take a look at this question. If the roots of quadratic equation are this, 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 then find the equation. The correct answer in this case is option number C, right? Option number C. That is because, take a look at a few things. First, I'll be giving you guys a new form or new way of representing quadratic equations, right? So a quadratic equation can be represented as x squared minus s x plus p equals zero, where s is the sum of roots and P is the product. P is the product, right? We've got sum and product. And so from this, what we can calculate is S is equal to 13 and P is equal to minus 140, right? And so we directly put this in this formula. From this, what we get is x squared minus 13x minus 140 equals to zero, right? And this is the answer.
Is this clear to everyone? Keep in mind this particular form as well, right? This comes in the handy in these sort of problems. It sort of saves you time because otherwise you'd have to multiply x minus 20 and x plus seven and then get the resulting values, right? But this becomes a bit lengthy. So this is one of the most direct approaches that you can take to solve this problem. All right, so with this done, we've come to the end of quadratic equations, right? Now, next up, we'll be moving towards arithmetic and geometric progressions. These are formulas for these two, right? For arithmetic sequence, the nth term is given by this formula. E is the nth term. And E1 is the first term. D is the common difference. And N is the number that we are trying to find, the number of term, right? Or the term sort of number in that entire sequence. Same with geometric sequence, right? So these are quite elementary formulas which you guys will have to be familiar with to solve those problems. So take a screenshot of this particular slide. All right. With that, let's move on to the first question. Locate the 16th term of the arithmetic progression, this, this, this. Definitely, the correct answer in this case is exactly as most of you say in the chat box. It's option number B, which is 50, right? How did we come about this? First, we'll be sort of noting down the information that we get from this sequence. We get that first term E1 is equal to five. Common difference D is equal to eight minus five, which is three, right? And then the number that we're trying to find, 16, is n is equal to 16. So we keep them in the formula that e of 16, or the 16th term, is equal to e1 plus 16 minus 1 times d. And so you keep all the values. We know all the values in this particular thing. So we do 5 plus 15 times 3, right? And this is equal to 50, right? It's fairly simple. I hope most of you got this, right? Is anyone confused in this? All right, assuming not, let's move on to the second question. Which term of the arithmetic progression this is this, this is 109? Let's solve this, all right? So we've got that the nth term is 109, and we know the formula E, or sorry, we'll do T is equal to Tn is equal to E plus N minus one D, right? We know that Tn is equal to 109, right? 
We know the first term, that is four. We don't know which term it is, so we'll keep n as it is. We know the common difference as well. That is nine minus four, which is five, right? So from this equation, all we have to do is solve for n. So what we do is 105, right? 105 over five is equal to n minus one, right? And this is, so n comes out as 21 plus one, which is 22. So the correct answer is option number A. So at the 109 is a 22nd term in this particular thing. Or just someone's asking, how did 105 come about? 109 minus four is 105. Right? 105 came from bringing this four over to the left hand side and then subtracting. So 109 minus four equals 105. Did everyone get this? All right, cool. So with this problem done, let's move on to Question number three, another fairly simple problem. Basically, the question is asking how many terms are there in this particular arithmetic sequence or progression, right? So we know a few things. We know that 205 is the last term, last term, right? Right? So whichever number is associated with 205 must be the total number of terms that is in this AP, right? So what we do in this particular instance, yep, definitely the correct answer is exactly as Roshan says, it's option number E, which is 34, right? How did we come about that? Take a look at this. We do 205 is equal to, I'll be directly using the formula, equal to first term, which is seven plus n minus one. We have to compute for n times the common difference, which is six in this particular case, right? So we solve this and what we get is n is equal to 198 over six plus one, which is 34. Definitely, answer is option number A. Most of you are correct in the chat box. Is anyone confused in this problem? All right, so let's move on to the fourth question. Discover the sum of this arrangement. So let's quickly walk over this. This problem is fairly simple as well. The formula for sum of an arithmetic progression, right, is given by S is equal to N over two whole times E plus L, where L is the last term, right? Last term. So previously we learned about another formula, which was two E plus N minus one D, right? But that can be translated as E plus L as well. And this is fairly simple in this particular instance. 
The only value that we don't know while directly looking at this particular sequence is the value of n, right? We don't know how many terms are there. So to find the value of n, it's fairly simple. We did that in the previous question as well. We simply do 182 is equal to two plus n minus one times the common difference, which is three, right? Into three. And we solve this and we get n is equal to 61, right? The value of n is 61. So we keep the value of n in this particular formula, right? Keeping the value of n in this, we get s is equal to 61 over 2 whole times e is 2 and l, the last term is 182. And once you solve this, the answer comes out as 5612 which is option number E. Did everyone get this? All right, so if you did not get this, then you have to be familiar with this particular formula, right? Keep this formula in mind, n over two bracket e plus l. And from this, the value of n can easily be computed by using this formula, where we are taking the last term and then we're trying to find which position this lies in from the first term, which basically gives the total number of terms in this sequence. And once we know all the values, that is n, e, and l, then we can simply put them in, in this formula and then solve for the sum. Someone is asking 61 came from where, right? So 61 is the value of n, which is a number of terms in the sequence. Yeah, L is the last term. Someone is asking what is L? That's the last term, last term. All right, so hopefully everyone was clear on this. Let's move to the fifth question involving geometric progressions. All right, so let's quickly walk over this. The correct answer in this one is exactly as Samuel says. It's option number D, which is none of the mentioned, right? The first term is 32, which can be written as two to the power five, right? That's the first term. And we have to find the total number of terms in this particular progression, right? So the formula for nth term is Tn is equal to E, r to the power n minus one, right? We know the last term, which is two to the power 50, right? Two to the power 50. We know the first term, which is two to the power five. And we know the common ratio. This 256 is two to the power eight, right? 256 is two to the power eight. And so the common ratio is two to the power eight divided by two to the power five, which is two to the power three. And this is n minus one. So from this two to the power 50 is equal to two to the power three n minus three plus five, right? Which is two to the power three n plus two. And so from this, we do 3n plus 2 equals to 50. And so solving this, right, solving this, we get n is equal to 16. So there are 16 terms in this, so the answer is none of the above. Is everyone clear on this?
All right. So let's move on to the sixth problem. In the given geometric progression, the term at position 11 would be what? The numbers, the sequence is the same as the previous problem, right? Definitely, the correct answer is exactly as Roshan says in the chat. It's option number E, which is two to the power of 35, right? Yep, most of you are, all of you are correct in the chat box. It's option number E, two to the power of 35. How did we do this? All we had to do is use a formula. T11 is equal to E is two to the power of five, right? Times the common ratio is two to the power of three, the same as the previous problem times 11 minus one, right? Because n minus one. So this is two to the power five times two to the power 30, which is equal to two to the power 35. This is the correct answer, option number E. Is everyone clear on this? Okay, so with this sun, let's move on to this seventh question. Yep, the correct answer is C, option number C, right? Which is B equals the root under EC, right? This is a standard formula for geometric mean, right? Geometric mean. So keep this formula in mind as well. If you are given three consecutive numbers in geometric progression, then the middle number is root under EC, right? And this is called GM or geometric mean. So keep this formula in mind. So with this done, let's move on to another problem. Let the multiplication of three consecutive terms in GP be eight, then the middle term of those three terms would be. This is a bit tricky if you're not familiar with these types of problems. Yep, the correct answer is as uh, Sam and Soilu just say in the chat box, it's option number E, right? So in this type of problem, when you are given three consecutive terms in GP, right? An ideal thing to do would be to choose the terms in such a manner that our computation becomes fairly simple for us, right? What we do is we choose, instead of choosing E, E R squared and E R cubed, right? We choose E over R comma E and E R, right? These three are in GP as well. And when you multiply these three, the R's cancel out. And so what we get is E cubed, right? Once multiplied, once multiplied. 
once this is done, we get E cubed and E cubed, the question is, question says that E cubed or their multiplication or products should be equal to eight, right? So E is equal to cube root eight, cube root eight, which is two, right? So this question in these types of question, choose this particular progression, not this, because if you choose this, then you will have to keep in mind the um, value of R as well, which we don't have at the particular moment, right? So that'll be really difficult if you choose this particular progression instead of this. So keep this progression in mind as well. So with that said, we have come to the end of this particular discussion, right? Um, so for useful resources in this particular topic, um, there are plentiful resources on the internet as well. You guys can visit Khan Academy if you're confused about the core concepts as a whole, but I've tried to include most of them in this particular session. Right, so go through that. Um, with that said, um, the session is dismissed at the moment. Thank you.